All right, let me uh, introduce myself. I'm Howie McHugh. I'm a registered professional engineer, uh, ASHRAE fellow, and certified plant engineer. And a little background, my first 20 years I was doing HVAC design. A lot of it was around hospitals, pharmaceutical museums, museums and things like that. I decided to expand my education and moved on to a design build firm where I was in charge of engineering, estimating, and also we had a separate company where I was in charge of the maintenance management system for about 24 million square feet of facility. And I had the opportunity, this was late in the 80s, to get involved with quality control and I was on a quality control steering committee. And then time, I moved on to a construction management firm, figuring I'd expand my education further, and also introduce the quality control process there and create a steering committee. Nowadays, I do troubleshooting and um, do some writing, I'm working on a book right now on management for ASHRAE. So my talk is third-party infection control. I like using third party, it's very intimidating. It gets people's attention. Um, and oh, let me back up a second. So uh, with facilities and infection control, I'm gonna talk about preventive maintenance portion of uh, the building system, focusing in on infection control. In hospitals, there's, there's a whole bunch of different, I call them silos, all sharing responsibilities or portions of it relative to their responsibilities, say HVAC, they have to operate and maintain the equipment, but there is some pieces of it that, ha that they have to address for um, infection control. And another, source of uh, comparison is pharmaceutical where they have just one uh, maintenance group to work on all the conditions that they're faced with to maintain a, a very controlled environment. And I look at both of these installations or a applications, healthcare and pharmaceutical, very similar because they both have very stringent requirements. Uh, pharmaceutical is focused on getting their product out with zero defects. Now, every once in a while you hear some story about pharmaceutical, but that's what their focus is and they're very successful at it overall. Healthcare is focused on having sick or injured patients come into the hospital and leave healthier. The that said, and there's been a few numbers thrown around today about the magnitude of infection control, but it's from the CDC. It says, although significant progress has been made in preventing some infection types, there's much more work to be done. On any given day, about one in 25 patients has at least one health care associated infection. And so I think we have a lot more to do and maybe we have to step outside of the box and, and look at maybe s some better ways to improve the process and further reduce the infection control. So my solution, and I've been championing this for a couple of years and I've had a couple of articles published on it, is a single source, source solution. And that solution um, can be in-house or if people feel they can't do it, maybe you take a radical step and you outsource it. But a single source requirement is to have one team doing the work, one work order system, which I'll explain a little bit on, one quality control process where you, you can monitor and measure and benchmark the results and then continuously improve upon it. In healthcare, with multiple, I'm gonna call them infection control teams, even though they're 
far more diversified in their assignments. But some of these are the clinic equipment, people, housekeeping, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, and then you have independent, uh, individual departments such as the ORs and intensive care. And with my feeling is with multiple teams, you have different philosophies, because all these teams have a group leader or department head. And although they all have the same mission and goals, due to personalities, they'll approach it different ways. They also have different priorities because of what they're responsible for, even though they're all focused on wanting to eliminate hospital-acquired infections. And they'll have different approaches. Uh, there may be a work order system. And a work order system is um, a process that it's most likely computerized, and it pro the uh, work orders are produced, handed out to specific technicians to go out and do their things to do. Others don't necessarily use a work order system. They may use a whole series of checklists or guidelines, and they follow that. And as a result, you have different means to monitor, measure, and benchmark the results because this information is going back to the associated group or department, and it's not going back to one point. With one team, there's a single continuous credo of how things are going to be done, and it's championed by one person heading up the group, but clearly it's a team effort. And they all have the same priorities, and that is strictly to focus on infection control or infection prevention. And they'll use a computerized maintenance management software, CMMS, system. And with that, all the work that's being done, and if that, all that single source work is covering these various uh, silos of departments, and all that's coming into one uh, spot, one database, that software program can produce uh, a single method, although you have a diversified data to look at, depending on what you want to look at, but it'll come in and you can monitor it all. You can measure it and you can benchmark that. So for a continuous credo, you have one policy and procedure manual and one person championing that, overseeing the team. You have one training plan. And the training, even though the, it, you may have someone doing HVAC maintenance, you may have in the same room doing the training who's doing housekeeping. And there's a shared information from there and maybe even cross training for some of this work. And a continuous education program. As new information comes out, new products come online. Uh, this all comes into one place it's documented, it's reviewed, maybe it changes the policies and procedures, maybe it's part of the new training plan, as well as the safety plan. With safety, you have to sometimes use you know, personal protection equipment. With this group, the emphasis and sole emphasis is on infection control management. The PPE equipment is part of the training to make sure that it's used correctly. Because sometimes that equipment's a nuisance and maybe people don't want to deal with it. But it's a requirement uh, within the group. That same team, same priority, has the same focus. They're not getting distracted by other uh, things to do that I believe if you're in going in and doing certain work, and, and again, I'll use HVAC, that technician is going to have a things to do list to lubricate a motor, to tighten a belt, and also address certain 
issues that could be infection control concerns relative to bacteria or even mold in an air handling unit. The same team has the same commitment. They interact together. They help each other together so that they have the same approach. And the infection control work orders are the only things to do list they have. So this computerized maintenance management software system, how many people are familiar with computerized work orders? Some, half, okay. Um, it's a computerized program. It, it has a database. You put the equipment in, or in this case, you'd even put the rooms in. And you'd have built in there a standardized work order for the particular uh, activity. And, it, and that software is set up so you can dissect the information whatever way you want with the, the database so that you can monif monif yeah, monit monitor and verify work performed. And quite often a person in responsible charge might take a dozen of these work orders and go out with the people who are doing the work and just spot check to make sure they're not just filling in the blanks and not doing the work. And the work on the other end should be a tablet touch screen. So as the people are checking off the work, it's going right into the database. There's no in between there. So you collect the, and analyze this information and you can report on the prevention and cleaning success. And the ability is also to be able to go back and compare the past to the present, to the future. And also to focus on publishing the infection control improvements, because you have data. And data is powerful. So a typical work order could be an equipment room. I mean, a piece of equipment, or it could be a room. And on that sheet is special instructions. And the, those special instructions are unique to that room or the piece of equipment. And then also it'll tell you on that sheet uh, the requirements. If you go all the way out, you've got to make sure you have the right tools, you have the uh, right cleaners, and so forth. So all that's on the worksheet, so before you leave the uh, operations area to do the maintenance, you have what you need to get the job done. And it also tells you if you need personal protection equipment. Then it has the tasking, and it may be 10 items, and it uh, could be more. It, it really depends on whether it's a piece of equipment or if it's a room. And those tasks will say, all right, remove such and such cover, uh, you know, wipe down a, a coil or whatever. So the tasks are there and next to it is the frequency and that frequency is uh, inputted in the computer so it'll issue this task, this work order once a week, once a month, could be annual. Uh, and then it also next to each task gives you an estimated time, three minutes to do this, five minutes to do that. So you can benchmark how the performance is being done to see the impact and it also contributes to what you need to budget for your estimate to provide this kind of maintenance. So the, the uh, work order process, if you look at that up there, uh, Infection Control Maintenance Group can share the same CMMS software, but it'll have its own uh, database information focused strictly on infection controls. <coughs> and so you go down there and you can, through that system, it goes down to infection control maintenance, and those work orders are issued to, say, the mechanical electrical, maybe, uh, I say, custodian, or housekeeping, room by room, and so forth. When they return the information, it goes back up into the work order system for reporting. So 
the, is, the work orders are issued and returned to the op, uh, CMMS operator. And they're issued based on schedule or maybe it's based on an emergency. Something happens, uh, there was a spill or something and there's contamination that uh, a work order will be produced but it's out of that standardized uh, work order system. And it'll instruct the technician with, as I said, special instructions. And the tools, the materials, the personal protection equipment, what the tasks are and the estimated time to complete. When the completed work order is submitted and it's inputted back into the CMMS. But here, as I say, it really should be tablet driven so as the people are doing this work, it's getting inputted right into the tablet and going right back to the uh, software system. With that, you can benchmark. You, well, you measure benchmark, you can report, and you can get it published. The uh, CMMS data can be produced weekly. It can be produced anytime you want. Maybe you want to do it quarterly and send it out uh, as historical data and a report, uh, excuse me, a report to the president or key department heads. Uh, when I was overseeing the work order system at one place, I try to keep it to a one-page statement so you didn't have to read page on page. It, was, it highlighted what was important for that person reading it. The other thing um, I encourage, encourage, and I learned this from uh, the pharmaceutical, they like to produce and put right out on the walls what they call storybooks. And um, they'll put a process and show how it's being done and the results of that. And I, and I think the public, particularly in uh, the healthcare uh, industry, should educate, and it's been mentioned a couple of times today, communicating with the people who visit. Um, it's like the uh, elephant in the room. No, whether it's multiple groups in a hospital doing their part to do infection control or it's a single source group, if a visitor comes in, they're probably not going to follow the hospital's policies and procedures. They, they want to come in and, and yes, you want to make sure that they can see the patient and so forth. But if that same visitor went to a pharmaceutical uh, facility, they wouldn't get past the front, uh, the lobby, front lobby, without being told, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to show you these clean rooms, or we're going to show you the manufacturing area. But this is what you got to do. You got to gown up, you got to do this and that. It sounds um, maybe pretty strict or astringent to put that, the visitors through that. But the hospital's commitment is really to the patient first. And, and the hospital wants that patient to leave without getting a hospital-acquired infection. So that, to me, is paramount. And re uh, visitors need to understand that. <clears throat> so in summary, a, a single trained team covering the diversity of infection control maintenance tasks is worth a try. And if pe people push back on it, then you say, well, let's put together a quality initiative, sit down and brainstorm, which is really problem solving. How can we take three of these groups and put them into one? And if that works and you, the lesson learned from that, that you then say, all right, well, let's go to add two more groups. <clears throat> because the goal is to eliminate uh, hospital-acquired infections. And yes, it may be an impossible task. Certainly, it's going to be impossible if visitors rule the roost going into the hospital. Um, but the, with the um, infection control initiative, there's a common credo to achieve zero hospital infection. Um, and it should be a goal. 
can it be achieved? Maybe, maybe not. It really takes on a, a, a tremendous effort by a lot of people. But I think to step it up to the next level of performance, because so much has been done, and many of these presentations have shown improvement, that maybe this is one more thing. Because work on is, this is a day-to-day, real-time operation. It's not a research and study. It's getting it done and doing it the best you can to prevent hospital-acquired infections. And it's a quality control process. And you can continually improve upon the process as you work at it, as you monitor and measure and benchmark. And I think I made it under 25. Did I beat him? No. No? no. <laughs> OK.